To worship you, Lord. To worship you, Ali. To worship you, Ali. Ali. To worship you. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. To worship you. To worship you, Ali. Ali. To worship you, Ali. Ali. To worship you. created us for your glory to worship you and to exalt you Abba Father and as we come into worship this morning may you take precedence king of glory that our hearts our minds our thoughts will be turned to you for the glory and the honor of your name amen amen Good morning and praise God. It's such a wonderful day that God has given us. We are glad for God giving us such a chance to be in this world. And uh, welcome all to the 9.30 a.m. youth service. Uh, during this service, we are required to adhere to the following COVID protocols. Kindly wash your hands before and after the service and sanitize remember to wear your mask at all times and in case you feel unwell kindly visit the first aid tent let us bow for a word of prayer lord our heavenly father almighty and ever living god we are grateful this morning for granting us such a wonderful day we thank you, Father, for your grace. We thank you, Father, for the gift of life. This morning, Lord, we invite your presence into this holy sanctuary. Lord, may the Spirit of God guide us. May it protect us so that everything we do, Lord, may be in accordance to your will. Lord, may your Spirit enable us, O Lord, to glorify and honor your holy name. We seek forgiveness before thee this morning. Lord, our hearts are penitent before, before you. We pray that, Lord, you may cleanse us by the blood of the Lamb. And, Lord, may you make us to walk in your obedience. All this we ask for the glory and honor of your name. 
In Jesus' name, we do pray and believe. Our Heavenly Father, you reach out in love and mercy to those who cry out to you for help. Reach out, O oh Lord, to rescue us in our day when we call upon your name. May you engulf us, may your mercy engulf us, and your love enfold us for your honor and glory. The Lord be with you. Lord, We've come together, the people of God, drawn by his spirit, longing for his world, to praise the holy name of the Lord, to share his glorious news of grace, to pray for our needs and the pain of the world, to rejoice in his love and be sent in his peace. We are heirs of the Father, joint heirs with the Son, renewed in the Spirit, together we are one. Beloved, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins in repentance and trust, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. So let us confess them to our Father. Eternal Father, God of our sisters. Grant us the joy of forgiveness and lighten our hearts. Through the glory of your Christ, who died and rose again for us. Amen. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ rejoices at repentance and declares his acceptance. The lost are found, the, lo the dead are alive, and surely his goodness and mercy will follow each one of us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At this juncture, I'll invite the Trinity Voices to lead us through the praise and worship session. Hello. 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 Could we kindly just rise? Rise and let us praise the Lord together. He's great and greatly to be praised. Amen. 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 Okay, okay, okay. Amen. He's an awesome God. Amen. He is. <laughs> You are an awesome God, awesome God, mighty God, mighty God. I give you praise, I give you praise, awesome God, awesome God. You are an awesome God, awesome God, mighty God, mighty God. I give you praise, I give you praise. Oh, God. I give 
Amen. Now, I am told that when the Lord visits you, you do not remain the same. That the presence of the Lord is meant to transform your life. It is meant to heal you. And this morning, we just want to declare by the virtue of his presence that is so real this morning, we shall not remain the same. Amen. Amen. We shall not remain the same. Amen. Amen. Sitabaki kama nilio Sitabaki kama nilio Sitabaki e Sitabaki e Maisha haya
God of promises who are yes and amen. That Father Lord as you visit us this morning Lord may you visit each and every family. May you visit this country. Visit this church and all the other churches oh Lord that Father Lord we shall not remain the same. That King of glory shall anoint us afresh as we get into the world to do what you created us to do Abba Father. That your presence in our life will be so prevalent the Lord people will see it and we'll want to know the God we serve because Lord we've learned and we've heard that when you visited Jacob he did not remain the same when you visited Abraham he got the promise that you had given him when you visited Elizabeth she got the promise that you had given her and that is what we stand on this morning Lord the Lord we shall not remain the same come on speak on all the places you want God to visit you this morning 
because I am a witness of the presence of God that when God indwells in your life you shall not be the same you shall not be the same you will hate sin King of glory Lord, we worship you. We exalt your name this morning. Thank you, God, for visiting us this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we shall not remain the same. Come on, just give him a shout of glory. Give him all the glory. give a big amen to all the prayers you've made this morning. Indeed, he's a good God and he's faithful. He's faithful. His promises are yes and amen. 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 Let us appreciate God for the present worship. Tim. We will now sit and as our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, let us join in singing the collect for the 11th Sunday after Trinity. Together, Eternal Father, we thank you for your expulsion of all the sick. We stand together with Christians throughout the century and throughout the world today to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together. The reason Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you. So kindly offer one another a sign of peace. request us to take our seats and if your visitor kindly remain standing. Our visitors, Karibuni Sana, 
This is the happiest church in the city. Downstairs, we have Connie. She's from uh, Cafe 61. Finally, Connie, minister to our visitors. Let us appreciate them as a... Uh, next stand it. So our visitors kindly don't be in a, don't be in a haste to leave immediately of the service. Uh, our lady there, Constance, will serve you and tell you more about our church. I'll invite the media team to kindly project our notices. Amari, and I'll be taking you through the announcements. Donny with Destiny is a morning prayer interlude that happens every Sunday just before service from 7 every Sunday to just before service from 7:30 to 8:30 a.m. Those of you who are prayer warriors and have the spirit of prayer within you and everyone else are invited to attend. Trinity Ashes are recruiting new members. If you have a passion to serve in church, kindly reach out to Sony through this number. The Youth Choir is recruiting new members and all, especially men, are encouraged to join. If you wish to do so, please use the contact. All those who are intending to wed in December or early 2023 are invited to register for a premarital counseling class. The classes will be held every Friday from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. from 9th September to 18th November. Adili Season 7 graduation is on today and will be held here at the auditorium. We are recruiting also for season eight. So ladies between ages 24 and 35 are required to register. The Cathedral Women Retreat will be held from the 15th to the 18th September 2022 for three days and two nights at Milele Beach Hotel. The cost is 17,500 shillings. For further details, please visit the information tent. The CBC Junior Secondary School will now be offered at All Saints Cathedral Primary School, Madaraka Campus. To book a slot, kindly reach us on the contacts given on the screen. The Diocesan Anglicanism course begins on 8th September to 1st December 2022 on Thursdays from 7 to 9 p.m. via Zoom. The diocese will issue a certificate to those who complete the course and the cost is 2,000 shillings. Please register by contacting us on the details given on the screen. The teens will be having a career fair on the 17th of September at the CTC St. Nicholas Chapel all teens are welcome to attend. They will also be having an outdoor excursion to Sasumwa Dam on the 24th of September. The cost is 1,000 shillings. The CTC Charity Golf Tournament will be held on the 28th of October at Karen Country Club. The entry fee is 4,000 shillings per golfer or 16,000 shillings per four ball. The provost is placing a request for professionals and in doing so is inviting volunteers from the following professions. Occupational health and safety, electrical engineering, electronic engineering, real estate management, marketing and interior and exterior design. Kindly get to the provost through our cathedral email. Nyayo High Rise residents are requested to meet Reverend Kamau briefly on the 4th of September after the 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. services. The meeting will be at the information tent. Now, children's ministry will be having a breakfast meeting for Sunday school parents on the 10th September at 7 a.m kindly register on the website. And finally, we invite you to the prayer and healing service every Wednesday from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. This Wednesday, we shall be praying for healing within families. Your team. And now, I'll invite Kimani and Nan for the first and second reading respectively. The first reading will come from the book of Revelation chapter 3, beginning to read from verse 14. 
Revelation chapter 3, beginning to read from verse 14. To the church in Laodicea, to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you are either one or the other. So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, so you can become rich, and white clothes to wear, so you can cover your shameful nakedness, and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be honest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, beginning to read at verse 1. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, beginning to read at verse 1. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. They are the kind who warm their way to your homes and gain control over weak-willed women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed down by all kinds of evil desires. Always learning, but never able to acknowledge the truth. Just as Jains and Jambres opposed Moses, so also these men oppose the truth. Men of depraved minds, who as far as their faith is concerned, are rejected. But they will not get very far, because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. And this is the word of the Lord. Kindly, let's appreciate God for the ministry of the word. I'll now invite Reverend for the next part of the service. I've been your host. Have a blessed week. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Those who are watching say God is good. No, those who are watching, not you. Those who are watching live. And thank you so much, Newsline, for making sure we are live. And we thank God for all of you. Tell your neighbor God loves you as you are. Kindly tell her with a smile. God loves you as you are. And Yes, and uh, we want now to give to the Lord our gifts. As I invite now the Trinity uh, praise to come and give us a number as we give. Ashes, let us get ready. And so God, as we give our gift, we pray that you will bless our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us give. Ashes, kindly let us wait on each one of us. So if you have your, um, your cash, you can just come forward. But if you have um, pay bill, the numbers are as projected. Media team, the pay bill number 303036. 30, 30, 
Yes, and also for CTC 30, 30, 35. Let us give to the Lord as he has blessed you. So you can start giving. For those who are walking to the front to give also, you are invited. Praise the Lord. Our prayer is this morning that if anything should fill our lives, it may be the Lord. Amen. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that would not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior. Draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. This world who are craving the pleasures of earthly things of God, but none, none can match the wondrous treasure. gifts that your servants have given we pray out of your abundance of grace and supply you will bless their places of work bless their businesses bless their offices bless their farms and always remember that all things come from you O oh lord and of your own we have given unto you amen we continue um today with the, last week we had soti i watched online um, Reverend Soti, what he was teaching us last week, it was amazing. For those who are just coming in, we have already given our offerings. So after the service, um, uh, kindly make sure you reach to an usher. We'll try and see if we can have one basket here for those who have not given. Otherwise, you can also give online. So the same key, but God sent his son. Okay, give us your key then. And Aniambia, it will be too high. As we prepare our hearts to hear the word of God. God 
Lord sent His Son. So we sing together. They call Him Jesus. He came to love. Acknowledge that life is worth living just because you live. And so, in our humble adoration to you, we cry that you help us walk this journey, that in the end we will see you one day face to face, despite the challenges and the difficult journey that we may pass through. So, grant us that as we look to you, we shall remain faithful and trust you in our journey. Bless this service and bless each one of us even as we hear your word. For the glory and honor of your name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I request that we sit and ask my wife to remain standing so that she can say hi to you. Hi. I was told this is a cathedral, you don't talk too much. But this is a blessing 
to have my wife with me. She was not here with us last week. And uh, I really want to give thanks to God for giving me another opportunity to speak to you. And also want to thank God for the leadership of the cathedral led by the provost at the clergy, uh, Reverend Captain Appella, and uh, all of you who are in the house, plus the team leaders of the youth service. May God bless you and give us grace to continue trusting him. Amen. Last week, God gave us grace to speak on the subject on the scene of hypocrisy. But today, we are asked to speak on the danger of lukewarmness. Now, I don't know why these subjects have been brought to be discussed at the cathedral, All Saints Cathedral. These are very difficult topics to speak about. And when you speak of lukewarmness, I'm not a judge. But if you have been keen on the words that have been mentioned by Second Timothy, the second reading, unless <laughs> you are an angel, <laughs> there are chances that one or two things there have appeared that resemble what you are passing through. Do you want to read them again? Let's go there and see. Second Timothy chapter 3. If I we read them and you realize there is none of them that affect you, then please walk out because this sermon is not yours. Hallelujah. <laughs> if we read them and you find nothing touching your life that requires you to pray with us at the end, I encourage you, this sermon will not have been yours. Quietly walk out and wait for yours. Maybe it will come. But for me, after reading it, I realized I can't afford to go out. And I ask God to help me. Godlessness in the last days. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. How about that? Lovers of money. How about that? Boastful. How about that? Proud. Abusive disobedient to their parents, ungrateful and holy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, precarious, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure and rather than lovers of God, <laughs> having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And then, I don't know whom he's telling, but he's saying, have nothing to do with the devil. So, are you the one being told to have nothing to do with or someone else? So please, if the words I've mentioned don't resemble you, there is a door there, you can walk out. But if you are thinking like me, then hang on. <laughs> Amen. He continues to say, they are the kinds who warm their way into homes. And gain control over weak-willed women, that is specifically for men, who are loaded down with sins <laughs> and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Always learning, but never able to acknowledge the truth. Now, I like those words in verse 7. Always learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Then that takes me back to the second reading of Revelation chapter 3 that is warning the category that are lukewarm. Learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Chapter 3, again, <laughs> you know this, this is chapter 3, Second Timothy, then this is chapter 3 of Revelation. <laughs> Now, in Revelation, Jesus is addressing a church in tight, called Laodicea, all right? And the church is seemingly being addressed by the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation. Who is this? Christ himself, Amen. And he's addressing a people 
who have been described as lukewarm. And uh, someone says that the essence of lukewarmness has to do with a person who is self-sufficient. A person who is saying, excuse me, I am spiritually self-satisfied. Excuse me, I am okay the way I am. I have Jesus already. It is a sense of I don't need more of what you are saying. Yani, we are a people that feel contented. I do not need to do more. And wherever I am, please give me my peace. It is my right. It is my choice. Don't judge me. You must have heard many of us today if you tell them, Wana in Mbaya, or what don't judge. Even when someone is a thief, even when the adulterers, even when one's doing bad, Wana, this is bad, we'll take you to hell. Now, are you God? Come on. It's just telling you the truth, but you don't excuse me. Don't bother me. Oh, the way you are dressing is not right. Excuse me, mind your own business. The society of I am satisfied, I don't need it, and allow me, therefore, brothers, to present to you that there are characteristics that resemble the lukewarm men and women that this scripture of Revelations is pressing on us. But it's also an aspect that we relate to the words of verse 7 of the second Timothy chapter 3 that says, they will keep learning. They will come to church. They will give their offertory. They will do everything. They will come and do everything that if you see them do, you think they are very good people. They will sit and take good time to be in the service early morning. The way you are sitting, they will walk into the cathedral. They look good. And when you see them, all looks well. But the problem is, and this is what I want you to know, that the church of Laodicea was not a church that was not going to church. There were not a people that were not going to the church. There were not a people that are drawn from the ministry. They are Christians. Actually, they were not non-believers. So the sermon this morning actually does not address non-believers. I also want to say, <laughs> if you have not been born again, this is not your sermon. <laughs> Because this someone is addressing people who are actually in a journey. They have acknowledged the Lord, but they have been quenched. Something has happened in them that is no longer allowing them to operate at the level that God is actually expecting of them. Amen? There are people that actually know the truth, but they have decided to suppress that truth. They no longer want to leave it. So that if they have to go by it, then they have probably to have, maybe, maybe they need to respond to verse 20 of chapter 3 of Revelation. Because interestingly you realize that in the text what we are being told, verse 20, sorry for jumping there, the Lord is saying, I am at the door. Remember, <laughs> he's telling the people who know that he's there, he's saying, Somehow you pushed me outside the door, but I've not gone away. I'm just around. In your lukewarmness, in your tendency not to be bothered, in your self-sufficiency, in your comfort, he's saying, I'm not far. Nico, tu hapo. Just open the door. I'm knocking. If you open, I will come again. Hallelujah. That's the joy of this sermon, brothers and sisters, that we are speaking of the fact that... Uh, we are asked to ask ourselves, and I want to challenge you this morning by asking you a question and probably indicate to you that the barometer, the barometer of probably measuring your ability to confirm whether you are lukewarm or hot or cold is dependent on what and how you are doing your prayer life. I want you that if there is anything you will forget from what I'm talking here, but I want you to take the barometer of testing your lukewarmness by ob observing and examining your prayer life. Someone asks, how frequently do you pray? How honestly do you pray? 
How expectantly do you pray? And how extendedly do you pray? Can I repeat again? So that you think of those things. Because the way you pray dictates on how you actually relate to your God. And I'm asking you to remember to ask yourself how frequently, how honestly, how expectantly, and how extendedly. Because you need to desire to strive with God to have a deeper knowledge of Christ Jesus if you ever desire to remain hot. Because I want us to know, the fate of both the, hot, the cold and the warm is more or less the same. The cold and the lukewarm. You are not very far. The cold is probably that you've not bothered to think about acknowledging God. But I want to thank God that the people here have gone beyond that level of cold. Because it is not easy to come to church if you are cold. <laughs> so where we may be is either lukewarm or hot. But hotness seems to be a dangerous place to be because God is looking at all saints. And I've told you, I don't know why this theme has been raised here. I don't know what your pastors are seeing. Ebu, Lisa, Jirani, you who are members of this church. What could have our pastors thought of us? Just ask. Don't look at me. Come on, ask somebody. I know you are in Barakoa, but just ask them. What could our pastors have thought about us? What did they see? What prompted them to bring this subject? Because last week we talked of hypocrisy. Could there be hypocrites in the church? Did they see that? Did God prompt them to see the possibility that we are having Christians who are having forms of godliness but are powerless in their manifestation and walking? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now they are speaking about lukewarmness. Could they have seen people that are probably appearing uh, committed to Christ? Because lukewarm Christians are members of the church of Christ who do not appear committed to Christ. Are you among them? They are members of the church of Christ who may occasionally attend the services just as you are doing. They are members of the church of Christ who are careless in private prayer, Bible study, fellowships, and any other thing that requires their attention. They are members of the church who rarely fast and pray. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody. They rarely fast and pray. They are members of the church who are inconsistent in their attendance of church activities. Actually, they will be good members of the Sunday cult. They come to church on Sunday very faithfully, but after Sunday, the business of the church stops. They'll come back and read the screens. I want to tell you, stand up here and ask these guys how many are carrying their Bibles. How many came with their Bibles? Can I just make a mistake and ask, my Bible, show it with me. My Bible. You lift up your Bibles, I see. Somebody, please don't take the video. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We do not really are keen on even carrying our Bibles. Sometimes I get amused just in case in this era of politics and people are running away and stones have been thrown. And you are caught up on the streets of the city running. My brother, <laughs> how will you excuse yourself? What will show that you are in church? Will you show them the phone? Will you show your phone? <laughs> Now, lukewarmness, I told you, if this someone does not touch you, go out. <laughs> because what I'm talking about is I'm talking also to myself. Amen? The church is facing the presence of lukewarm members who never make a sacrifice of giving. Members who will never, or if in case they double into sinful pleasure at confidence, in, 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 in joy, in comfort, 
They are saying we will come back on Sunday and say if we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So they just do all takataka. Those things that are mentioned by Timothy in chapter 3. And as they find a zote, then in Sunday, and Angoja Reverend Apella Asimame, I declare ya kwamba dhambi zako zimesamehewa. You know, I was wondering, you're not following, <laughs> you're not following the Rati by Anglican Sana, like in what I've noted, you don't want to forget, is seeing Muchungaji coming to declare ya kwamba God of Leveling. How comes? You know, <laughs> meaning, we value it, amen? And that is why at the end we say, Lord, grant us the joy of forgiveness and lighten our heart with the glory of, but we cannot continue in that way. That is a characteristic of a lukewarm Christian who does not care what he or she does during the week, only to wait on Sunday to come to be declared an absolution by the priest. My friend, your life may end one day before Sunday. Who will have declared the absolution for you? It may end when probably it's when you are hunting, coming to church so that Apella can declare forgiveness of sins. There is an opportunity here that God is giving us as believers. That there is a need for us to re-examine ourselves. Amen? We need to re-examine how we are operating. You need to examine how you are thinking, how you are operating within your daily life. How close are you with Christ? How much are you striving? How much are you longing to be connected to God? How much is your daily living wherever you are having to do with this faith? The last verses of chapter 3, or rather the verse that we've read, helps us to understand that they who will overcome have been promised to stay with Christ eternally. Will you be part of them? Brothers, when you are living today in your everyday activity, do you remember that there is a day that you are not going to be on this earth? Have you ever imagined that one day you will be absent from the face of this earth? If you are a believer in the faith that we profess, do you also appreciate that one day you will stand before the mighty God? That one day you want to rejoice and say you want to join together with the faithful ancestors. You want to join with Akina Moses in singing the song of the Lamb. You want to join with the men and women who have become victorious. Are you aware that you are actually short-lived on earth? You know, I love the verse, the verse that we are reading in Revelation. That Christ is looking at us and saying that we think that we are sufficient. We think that we have all. We think that we have all it takes. We think that we are rich. We think that we are seeing well. We think that we are dressed well. We are thinking that we are clothed well. But God is saying, come on, from his eyes when he looks at you, you are naked. Aye. Can you imagine the way you are clothed? Yani hata mimi nimevaa hivi na hii nguo yote. Lakini Mungu ananiambia mbele yake mimi niko nini? Uchi. Yani he is seeing you the way you are. You can't pretend. You can't. I said here last week no matter how nice you can look to human being as your pastor, mchungaji anaweza kukuona wewe ni mzuri kabisa with nice dress. <laughs> but God is knowing the depth of what exactly is in you. You can't pretend. He's looking at you and saying, come on, stop thinking that you are dressed. Stop thinking that you are warm by the virtue of what you own. At the pesa ukonayo, kazu unayo, but they're looking at you and realizing that you are lukewarm. You are not where I want you to be. Because without Christ, you are empty. You are naked. You are hungry. You are in trouble. <laughs> so stop thinking that you are safe. You know, I thought about this and said, so Jesus is looking at me and he's seeing my clothes that I think I have then he's telling me, does not block me from him seeing me. And sarcastically enough, he's telling me that I say I am rich, but I'm poor. Then he invites me to go and buy <laughs> gold. 
from him. Go and buy clothes. Go and get everything that can make me be what he wants. But see, I'm a summer, I am poor. So where is this wealth that I can use to buy the riches that is promising? I am poor. So my wealth is only when I open the door. Amen? And he comes in. When he dines with me and I dine with him, then I have wealth sufficient enough that can buy everything that I need. Hallelujah. Christ is teaching that we must make clear difference of the things just as in Matthew chapter 10, 38, Bible tells us that we do, we, uh, that he who does not take his cross and follow him cannot be his disciple. Because there is a cost. And you know, if there are any things that actually kill the confidence and the hotness of the believers, things which I do not need to mention to you, some of them has to do with the heavy cross of Jesus that he calls us to bear. And it becomes so heavy if he is not part of it. Amen? Remember, he invites us to come and take his yoke, which is lighter. But that yoke that is lighter is only made lighter if Christ is part of that journey with you. Amen? So that if it is you carrying it, then you will not succeed because there is a cost to pay for being a disciple of G Jesus. One of them, he says, is denying your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband, and even your own life. And that is why when God is describing our lukewarmness, then I want you to remember that the church of Laodicea was tagged lukewarm because the individual members were neither cold nor hot. They were lukewarm and that letter was to help them see themselves the way Christ was seeing them. And that is the same purpose even today. And therefore, in lukewarmness, we are to be eradicated out of the flock of Jesus. And this is the most painful and shameful thing that can you imagine whatever you've ever tried to eat and you want to puke? Can you imagine that that is how Jesus feels? <laughs> When, when he's seen you, and you are right, then he's saying, he feels like puking you. You'll be spewed. Have you ever felt like you want to throw? <laughs> so, <laughs> what is it? What was the taste of that that made you feel like throwing? <laughs> so, can you want to think of yourself as the same <laughs> in a the mouth of Jesus? Do you care? Do you care that he is ready to, to throw you out? Do you care? Because if lukewarmness is to be eradicated in the church or the congregation, then each one of us must take a personal action. A personal it is not collective. It is so easy to be religiously complacent and look like you are there when in the real sense you are a walking war. A battle on the street completely out of what God calls their own. It is easy to say I am saved, 
But it is not easy to keep walking faithfully. You need help. It can be easy to begin a journey. They say even those who are running, you can run very fast. Lakini wakatwa kukamilika. When you are almost finishing, it is tough. That is why several scriptures have reminded us that you must walk in accordance to the rules. We need to trust God that if we repent faithfully, then he will accept us back. Amen? And let us therefore allow him into our innermost rooms of our affection, our joy, our whatever it is that we want. Can you allow God to deal with it? Can you allow him to the innermost hidden points? Sometimes I've made fun and said, I know it is difficult to be open to even human being fully. And sometimes a husband and a wife can sit together for several years. But there are things that that man will never tell his wife about what he ever did in his life. They are so secret in you. There is a wife that will never tell the husband everything. But that should not be the case with God. Allow him to come in to the closet of your life. That is why when he says, please, stop struggling in your lukewarm status. Open the door. I am at the door. I'm knocking. Just allow me in. You are now not cold, but you are not yet hot. I want you to be hot. Open the door so that I can come in and sit with you so that I can be part and parcel of the drive of your life. Brothers, I want to finish by telling you this. When we are broke and have no money to buy gold, allow him in. He will be the source of that gold to buy the wealth that does not end. When you are naked, the way you need to understand the nakedness of your heart before him and the fear and the intimidation the things that draw you even away from participating and actively involving in the ministry of the church wholeheartedly. Please surrender to him. Repent as you continue considering your ways. When you realize that actually the garments that you are putting on are what they describe as a sheep cloth covering a wolf, please allow him to deal with your situation. When you realize that you need hope, strength, courage, perseverance, joy, all that we could ascribe or describe as the gifts of the Holy Spirit, please allow God in. He is knocking at the door of your heart. I don't know what it is that has kept you lukewarm. But this morning, I want to invite you to the Lord. I want us to go to the Lord and ask him to come in. As I said, I am not preaching as someone for a person who has not been born again. I'm talking to fellow brothers and sisters like me who are lukewarm, who would want God to come in. Do you see aspects of lukewarmness in your life? If today Christ came, would he welcome you home? Would this word be yours? If today he walked into this place, if today death was at the door and you were asked, to go. Are you ready? Will you have a reason to say, yes, let me go? Or you'll say, excuse me, let me work on a few things before. The last words of that chapter says, as so you continue reflecting on your life, see the verses 21 and 22. 
those whom I love, verse 19, I rebuke and discipline. So be honest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door. And knock. If anyone hears me, my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. And to him who overcomes, I will give him the right to sit with me on my throne just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. We can't attain that condition of sitting at the right hand and on the throne with Jesus by our strength. We need Christ to come in. Would you want the Lord to visit you this evening? This afternoon, this morning, this week, do you see your context of lukewarmness and would want him in? I would want to ask us all to rise up as we sing that song faithfully and prayerfully for the next two, three minutes before we wind up. And if the Lord is speaking to your heart and you'd want us to make a special prayer with you, I know we have the ministers of the Lord are in the house. I will ask them to come in front as we usher those who are asking God to come into their hearts. You are opening your door to the closet of your struggles, your marriage, your life, your business, your education, whatever it is that is happening around your life. If you are there, just as you stand, walk in front, we are going to pray with you that the Lord may come into your life. You are telling Jesus, come into my life. Whether you are on top, just come down. Don't be afraid. This is a week of the week of this month. It's our final week of this mission week. The Lord is inviting you. Just sing that song, Unanijua Viema. Unanijua Moana. He knows your nakedness. He knows your pain. He knows the things that are drawing you back. I invite you. Just walk. Just come. Just come. Just come. We'll pray with you in faith. The Lord who sees your secrets. He is going to respond to your needs. He is going to speak to your situation. It doesn't matter what you are passing through. The God of love is inviting you this morning. Yes. Oh, one Baba, what did you have Jehovah, what did you have? Thank you, sister. What did you have one? The Lord knows you, even in your struggles. If there are sins of your life that have kept you away from the journey, the Lord can turn around the obstacles, He can turn around your situation. He can give you a new name. He can redefine your future. He can redefine your destiny. He's a God of a second chance. This afternoon, this morning, He is inviting you in your sickness. He's inviting you in your hidden condition. He's inviting you in your hidden status. He is doing a new thing. Just tell Him, Lord, you know me. And if He's able to show you that He knows you, just walk the way our brethren have come. And I ask the Wachungaji, just come and pray with these brethren. Just come, just come, just come. Just come, just come, just come. Wherever you are, just come and tell it to the Lord. Tell him, Lord, I surrender to you. I surrender my family. I surrender my relationship. I surrender my heart. I surrender my business. I surrender my life. I release it to you that you take over. He's taking it over. He's taking it over. Yes, Lord. You know me by name. You know me in my filthiness. Lord.
Lord, you know me in my school. Elements of weaknesses. Oh, Jesus. What did you are? 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 Atakuongoza Wanijua baba Jehova wanijua Baba ya Niko baba To request Reverend Abella, come over. You who are in front here, just open your heart as Muchungaji prays for you. Just tell him, Lord, I am tired of being in lukewarm status. I am tired of looking and having a form of godliness, but the power of that God is not manifested in me. Just talk to your God as He prays for you. The Lord knows the desires of your heart, it doesn't matter. Your tears are rolling. The Lord is aware about them. He's taking it over. He's taking it over. Just surrender to him. He knows you. Let's appreciate Jesus. It's a beautiful hand clap, everybody. Psalm 119, verse 33. Teach me the ways of your statutes, and I will continue to the end. Now, I really want to appreciate our speaker today. And I really want to appreciate that word. That word is only for those who want to continue to the end. You know, you have fights, you have struggles, but you want to continue to the end. Teach me thy ways and I will continue to the The fights we go through, the falling, the coming up, you know. If you're, if you're sensitive, let me just say this. If you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you will know, you, you will notice that there's a spiritual revival already visiting the city. I don't know. And please, forgive me for saying this. If you're too caught up with so many things that are happening to draw your attention, you will miss it. Last week, I wasn't here. We, we've been to schools. People are giving their life to Jesus. I'll ask the media next week to just show what is going on in school. It's amazing. The move of God is amazing. People are getting saved. People are getting changed. People are getting transformed. Chains are breaking. In the city now, there's a, there's a, there's a renewed hunger after God. I'm glad that now we don't have to be to speak a lot about politics. We want to talk about the word of God. Amen. And I'll be bold here to tell you, I'm not interested in what is going on. You know? I'm interested in what God is doing. Amen. Amen. That is what draws my attention. And so this altar call is basically for those who say, Rev, I want to continue to the end. It's not about, it's not about, you know, how good or how much you want to feel nice in church. No. It's about those who are saying, Lord, I have not been living right, but I want to go. I want to follow after Jesus. I want to follow after Jesus. My prayer is that none of us will be left behind. That is my prayer. Because more and more is coming. Let me tell you, God is a jealous God. From 2019, the talk in the, in the world has been called COVID-19. Believe you me, beginning this year, 2022, 2023, Jesus will be more popular than COVID-19. I'm telling you. I am telling you. I'm telling you. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Thank you for coming, brother. If you're coming down, come. I don't want you to miss this opportunity. If you are coming as I'm talking, come. 
just come so that we can be able to pray together if you are at the crash wherever you are the balcony as i'm talking this just come because i do it i would want to carry us all along to heaven if jesus is to come today it would be beautiful to see all of us in heaven it will be beautiful it will be beautiful I want to say a prayer here but mark my words friends this if there be a time for us to go on our knees and to connect with Jesus it is now I want us to shut our eyes again one more time I want you to look at your life as I'm looking into mine I also want you to, to look at you as if you're watching us online or if you're watching us on the sea just shut your eyes and look at your heart Look at yourself. Don't allow anything to distract you. If there's a baby near you, if there's something near you that is distracting you, just, this is your time. This is your time. What is this habit that is removing away from God? Nobody else may know it, but you do. What is this thing that is drawing away from God? You come to church every Sunday, but... On Monday, you're out. What is this thing? I feel I want to pray for those who are saying, Rev, this is me. This is me. This is me. I don't want to lead these double lives anymore. Together with these that are in front, I don't want to close you behind. Once again, I'm making this altar call. Thank you for coming. Keep on coming. I don't know why I'm sensing in my spirit. There are so many people here. You don't, you, you don't have to stay on your seat. Thank you for coming, my sister. Thank you. Come down from the balcony. Come down. I'm waiting for you. Come, 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 come. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly. God bless you. Let's clap for them as they come. Let's clap for them as they come. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot afford. We can't. We can't afford. Friends, we can't. We can't afford. We can't afford. We can't afford. I have told God, together with my wife, I've told God, if this is a season I'm going to serve God with all my heart, is now. Much more. You people think you've seen Reverend Appella. You've not seen him. If this is a season, it is now. Keep on coming. Let's appreciate them. They're still coming. Come. We are waiting for you. Come from the balcony. We are waiting. We are waiting. We are waiting. You understand? I've about a minute and then I'm going to close. I've about a minute and then I'm going to close. pray for these that have come you that have come here and together with those watching us on online on your cameras on, I mean, on, your, on, your, on your computers, on your TVs wherever you're watching us from kindly repeat this prayer after me even as we pray together say Heavenly Father together with all of us in this service Heavenly Father this morning I stand before you. I didn't see 
his wife properly. First lady, would you please come? You know we have first ladies in church. Would you come and just come, come and greet us here? At the balcony, they didn't see you. Let's appreciate her as she comes to say hello. Amen? Let me tell you, it takes an anointed, let me not talk much. Say hello. Hello. Buenas if you Thank you. Hiya. Oh, let's appreciate her. Amen. Hivo too. Amen. That's why we encourage you men to marry powerful wives. Amen. They, they can't even say amen. Unenda tu kama hot and tot, hunting and gathering. Hallelujah. Apana, listen to God. Amen. Reverend Kamau is here. Come and give us the benediction. Let's appreciate this man of God. We love you. Come and give us the benediction. And as he comes to give us the benediction, I know there are people who came in, you've not given your offering, and you're saying, Rev, I want to give my offering. There are two ushers that are going to stand. One upstairs at the door there, the another one downstairs here at the door. If you would not given your gift and you want to give your offering kindly, uh, you will meet those ushers. Do we have them ready? Ushers, are you ready? Michelle and your team, you're ready upstairs? Downstairs, we have somebody? Okay, good. Reverend, come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. So happy to be back. Not to minister, but to be ministered to. To the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Joel. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Open the door. Shall we pray? We thank you, Lord, for walking with us throughout this service. We have presented our praise and adoration to your holy name. Lord, you have spoken to us through your word. May that word not return to you void but accomplish your purposes in our lives. Dear Lord, as we part now to go and continue with other activities of this day and indeed the week ahead of us, to you we commit ourselves. When we meet again next week, we will not fail to return that sacrifice of thanksgiving to your holy name. Beloved in Christ, may Christ, the Son of Righteousness, now scatter the darkness from before your path. May the Lord watch over your going out and your coming in. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord meet all your needs according to his riches in glory. And you, my beloved, May you dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of your lives. Gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. In the day of trouble, he will hide you under the shelter of his wing. And may he now cause the holy blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, remain with you, abide with you, now and forevermore. We have come to the end of our service. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Hey, tunaeza ondoka. Jesus.